Welcome back everybody to AI News. I do my best to try to do these every single Friday. Essentially, this is your big stirred up roundup of all of the AI news that you should try to keep track of. All I'm saying, viewers, is if you are even slightly into AI, if you're even slightly paying attention, you're probably ahead of uh, the majority of the population, at least at the moment. But let's dive in here to our AI news. We got a lot of great stuff today. New image model, big chat GPT news, which I just talked about yesterday. Some interesting stuff going on with the job market and some leaked stuff from Google that is pretty surprising. Oh, and by the way, viewers, whenever you see one of these accounts on Twitter, give them a follow because they are definitely worth following. Our first news is something I made a video about already, but Deep Floyd IF is live. It's a fully open source AI image generator that has upscaling built in. It does in painting and it does really realistic generations. That's what it's known for. And it can also spell better than any model I've seen before. It actually produces a zero shot FID 30k score of 6.66, really, really good. This beats out Dolly 2, Party, E Diffie, Stable Diffusion, all on benchmarks. I think it follows prompts a little bit better than Midjourney at times, but Midjourney has some clarity and coherency to it that can't be matched at times. I plan on doing a full video on how to install Deep Floyd IF on your own machine so you can run it at home in the future. And I also want to compare it directly to Midjourney at some point in the future as well. But here's some tech test samples here. Obviously, it's made by Deep Floyd Labs, so they do this dark side of the moon imagery to show it off. But I did do a whole video about it, and it is a very good model in my opinion. The fact that it's open source is the really important part though, because once people really get their hands on this thing and start messing around with it, hopefully the same thing that happened with Stable Diffusion and how it evolved over time to become really good, this the same thing is going to happen with Deep Floyd IF. Here is some more news regarding ChatGPT plugins, specifically the browsing model. The official OpenAI model instead of a browser extension looks pretty great. Sorry for the low resolution viewers, but you can see ChatGPT has this browsing the web feature. Not everyone has access to this yet. It's a very limited access thing. I don't even have access to it. But you can see it searches for this specific thing about the Oscars. It can then go ahead and click on a specific link. It then reads the context. It then goes ahead and searches for something new and then clicks a link and so on. You can think of this like the little AGI agents that we talked about. It's, it's similar in the sense that it can click on links and actually go ahead and do stuff it can't run forever though on its own but yeah it can do a little bit more advanced browsing than you even get with bing but this advanced style browsing is also coming to bing and we'll talk about that soon and this is also exciting gpt4 mode in chat gpt is going to get browsing as well so it's not just default gpt 3.5 with browsing gpt4 which is far far better is going to now have browsing ai searching the web farther than we've ever seen it come before hopefully we all get access to this stuff soon but yeah as you can see there's all these extra chat gpt modes that are in this dev only alpha access and only a few handful of people have access to them we have plugins up here default 3.5 with browsing gpt4 with browsing and then code interpreter and i just talked about the code interpreter yesterday and that thing is truly mind-blowing we'll talk a, a little bit about it today but the, yeah the code interpreter is just like head explode so this one didn't really come as a surprise to me amazon's ceo who isn't actually jeff bezos contrary to popular belief andy jc shared plans to revolutionize alexa by developing a cutting edge large language model which really makes sense i gotta say though developing a large language model you guys are behind openai has been on this for years and microsoft uses openai's model so if microsoft wanted to come out with a competitor to Alexa, I think they could pretty easily and it would be a lot better than Alexa. But we'll see. Amazon's got a lot of power and they're also in cahoots with Stability AI, so maybe that's part of their project. Either way, Alexa is going to be powered by a large language model in the future, which makes a lot of sense. They want to make Alexa the ultimate AI personal assistant. That's what it tried to be when it first announced, but it can't do very complex tasks like something ChatGPT could do, for example. Alexa really is already a force to be reckoned with, so I agree with AI Advantage on that. If they could incorporate a large language model into Alexa, it would be a game changer. Smoke away here on Twitter is pointing out that we are in the early days of infinite AI generated music. AI generated music is already taking the world by storm. We saw last week with the announcement of Drake AI songs 
such as Winter's Cold, and then there was an entire AI album made just by Drake, and it was actually really good. I will link it down below. I recommend you listen to it, because there's some good songs on there. Anyways, Smokeway points out that there's already a bunch of AI hits that aren't just by Drake on here, and there's a whole list of about, oh my god, about a hundred of them, I think. And these are all just hit AI songs that you can listen to by all of your favorite artists. We see Drake on there, obviously, Travis Scott, Kanye West, Lil Uzi Vert, Rihanna's on there, Michael Jackson, so it's even bringing people back from the dead to make new music. Uh, but yeah, the songs are really good, it sounds just like someone singing, you can't really tell that's AI generated. So yeah, the music industry is going to be taken by storm in no time by these songs. Once one of these songs really goes mainstream, it's all over. I actually did a full video about this one. Eleven Labs AI, which is known as the best text-to-speech platform, I mean, their text-to-speech sounds like a real person speaking and it can clone voices, it can clone anyone's voice, it cloned mine in the video I did, but now your voice can speak in eight languages eight different ones as Eleven Labs voice cloning is now multilingual. Like I said, I did a whole video where we experiment with all of the different languages and we had some really great feedback in the comments and it turns out that they're all pretty good. English is obviously really good as we've already known. German's really good. Polish, Spanish, Italian. Apparently the Hindi is also really good. I think it's the Portuguese and the French that it's a, a little bit struggling with, but either way, they're all very good and apparently the accents are really on point for these. But yeah, the testing we did, it was very, very impressive. So now you can speak pretty much any language in your own voice when it is cloned by Eleven Labs and then typed in a different language. Of course, you could use something like ChatGPT as well to translate perfect sentences. Really mind-blowing stuff. It's, it's incredible. NVIDIA here has announced 19 different papers from their research that got accepted into SIGGRAPH 2023, and this is one of the best ones here. This is interactive hair simulation. This obviously is the interactive hair simulation. I mean, look how realistic it is. I don't know how the AI has learned how to do this, but yeah, it's quite incredible. It's able to simulate every individual hair and how it's supposed to move when you're dragging it around into different positions. So really incredible technology here. If you wanted to do a physics simulation of this, it would be very, very difficult to do to simulate each individual strand of hair. So the AI is able to figure out where all those individual strands are supposed to go just by being trained on how hair works, essentially. Really cool technology, and uh, yeah, I'll link this down below, and you can see there is 19 papers from NVIDIA Research. Lots of AI stuff going on at NVIDIA behind the scenes. They are really not only developing the hardware for this AI tech, they're also developing a lot of really great software. Here is the big boy, probably the biggest announcement of this week. Again, I just did a full video on this yesterday. ChatGPT's code interpreter. It is the latest, as Nathaniel points out here, the latest this changes everything moment in AI tech. A few days in and we're already seeing data analysis, visualization, business strategy, academic research, and paper writing. Basic video editing was even observed as well, and we I showed off all of that stuff in my latest video. We'll go through some quick examples that Nathaniel points out in this thread. As you can see, you can upload a CSV data set with 10,000 rows in here, and you can ask it to do some basic visualizations, and there it goes. It actually provides you with accurate graphs based off of the data that you uploaded into ChatGPT. So this is a true mind blow. As you can see, it did an accurate bar graph here of song duration at the bottom and then frequency at the top. And then it also did a scatter plot of song hotness versus artistic familiarity. Really advanced and incredible stuff. This is kind of the most mind-blowing one that I saw in yesterday's video where it actually did crime hotspots in San Francisco. Again, I literally just talked about this in the last video, but you can literally see there's the longitude on the bottom, the latitude at the side here, and it creates a literal visualization of San Francisco. This is essentially a map, and it shows you where the least activity for crime is and the most activity for crime is. So it's doing some really insane stuff. I mean, it built a map based on just data points. That's insane stuff. And if we go up here, it also created some graphs to go along with the same exact data. So 
mind blow. And this one census data was uploaded into GPT with code interpreter. You ask it to generate some interesting draft hypotheses about industries and then test them with the data. So it actually develops its own hypotheses on the data as well, develops its own methodology and creates its own results here based off of the data. It's literally doing data science all on its own. You don't even have to prompt it with your own hypotheses on the data. You can ask it to come up with its own. So it's really like the full Kahoot here. It's the full big thing. I also went over this one in yesterday's video as well. Essentially what you do is upload a photo to ChatGPT and say, develop a script to extract the top five colors from the picture and create a color palette based off of it and then essentially allow me to download the png of the color palette ChatGPT essentially goes no problem it gives you a list of how to do it yourself i guess but then it goes ahead and lets you upload the photo and starts to develop the script all on its own so there's the script and then it gives you a download for the png right here so if you want, you can download the PNG, but then it goes ahead and says, can you actually display that palette PNG for me? And then it goes ahead and it is able to display the color palette at the end of the day. So that's actually a shockingly complex task. It's learning to create that palette script all from scratch and then displaying it for you. So it's not like it's going off and using something that's built into ChatGPT. It's generating that very script in real time and then using it accurately. All you have to do is ask ChatGPT code interpreter to create a GIF of a map of the lighthouse locations in the United States where the map is very dark, but each lighthouse twinkles. And then there you go. There's all the lighthouses in the United States in the GIF that ChatGPT created. Really astonishing work. It was also able to create a GIF that essentially visualizes the typical matrix letters streaming across the screen in green, and it did a very accurate and perfect job of that. And then here is the example of the video editing. Here is the GIF that we uploaded to ChatGPT. And then this is what it gave us a slow zoom in of that very same GIF. And it did it very well. So that's the basic video editing capabilities that ChatGPT Code Interpreter has. So yeah, ChatGPT Code Interpreter is really incredible. If you guys want to check out more of what this thing can get up to, please check out my previous video. I literally just uploaded it yesterday. So Matt Wolf on Twitter here points out that Bing has opened up their Bing AI chat for everybody worldwide and they also added a few extra little improvements as well. I also talked about this in yesterday's video but the basic rundown here is that now you have chat history like ChatGPT finally available in Bing AI so you can actually use your existing conversations and let them persist over time in the sidebar of Edge. You'll now have the ability to export and share your chat conversations with others. They're actually opening up the platform for developers to build on top of. So this is very similar to the chat GPT plugins that are in the work in the background. So yeah, this is essentially Bing AI plugins and it's going to provide a lot of really great capabilities just like chat GPT. We're also going to have visual search. So when you search for things with Bing AI, you're going to get image and video answers that pop up inside of Bing AI. Their image generator, which is based off of Dolly, it's essentially a supercharged version of Dolly. I've talked about it in a few of my previous videos, but now they're opening that up to over 100 languages so people can generate with that thing in their native language. And this is coming very soon multimodal chat where you can actually upload images and use them as reference in your different searches. Really awesome to see that as well. We've been waiting for a very long time to have multimodal capabilities inside of GPT powered products. In some more distressing news here, ChatGPT just destroyed a public company in 24 hours. So that's a little bit of an exaggeration, Rez Kareem, okay? But it is true that it was able to tank a stock. The AI threat is no longer hypothetical. I guess so. It's not as big of a deal yet, but it is definitely coming. AI is going to threaten the workplace of so many countless industries and now we're sort of starting to see things tip around and change a little bit so we got to be very wary of this let me know what you guys think about this in the comments because it is a it is a little bit like an overreaction in my opinion but i can see where things are starting to go so essentially chegg which as we know is an online education company they offer school books for kids and most importantly answers to homework questions for different students in school 
and tutoring services and stuff like that. But their CEO essentially admitted that ChatGPT is impacting its new customer growth rate. So they're seeing declined projections in new account growth because of ChatGPT's rise in popularity among students. And it led to a lower revenue projection for the upcoming quarter. And yeah, the stock market definitely did not take it lightly. It plummeted by over 48% overnight, which is I'm, in my opinion, a gross overreaction because they're not losing 48% of their earnings. Yeah, but uh, it's price target on Chegg stock cut from $18 to $12. I do believe that the market reaction is extraordinarily overblown. That is definitely true. But Chegg actually plans to fight back uh, against the ChatGPT barrage with its own AI product known as Chegmate, and they're doing it the smart way. They're collaborating with OpenAI, the company that made ChatGPT, to create Chegmate. So it's actually probably going to be better than ChatGPT at serving their specific Chegg customers. So that's that's the right move here. They got to get that thing out as soon as physically possible to compete with ChatGPT, in my opinion. And they are doing that. It's actually set to launch this exact month, May. And yeah, they believe that combining GPT with Chegg's vast amount of academic data could be an absolute game changer. And I completely agree with this. We can see how far the stock absolutely plummeted once this announcement was made and this uh, projections for earning was made down almost 50% of its original value, which is just ridiculous. I mean, ChatGPT is a big deal, but once that Chegmate thing, if it is better than ChatGPT at serving those very specific use cases, then that stock could actually shoot up farther. I mean, can you think of Chegg plus AI? People would definitely pay for that, especially if they don't have to pay more for those AI features. I have paid for Chegg in the past. So going to run through a quick few announcements. Rowan Chung, who has been amazing at providing AI news to everybody on Twitter here. As you can see, I only follow the best people. That's why I say you follow all of these people that I talk about in these videos because they post great AI news right when it happens. DeepMind released some news. The US White House released some news. DeepMind CEO says that AGI is possible in a few years. I agree with this. AI development is accelerating at a very rapid rate and it's no surprise to me that AGI is already on our horizon. I mean, just yesterday we saw what is possible now with ChatGPT's added features able to modify and change files, create graphs, do real data science, and it was already very capable before. So once these things can run on the, their own and alter themselves on their own, it's off to the races and we're going to have full fledged AGI. So the White House actually called for an AI risk meeting. Honestly, the White House, our government really should be more up to date on this. I think that this AI risk meeting should have happened months ago, personally, but they're not as up to date on certain things as we might be in the AI sphere. So this is something that just sort of came on their horizons. They scheduled to meet with executives from Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, Anthropic to address the risks of AI, and those are all great companies. It's really surprising that Anthropic was invited. Sam Altman was there, Sundar was there, but yeah, all the, all the CEOs essentially went and met at the White House, and this is a pretty decent group of people. Some people were left out. I would have liked to see people like Emad there, the creator of Stability AI, but he is not really seen as this profitable company, maybe, so I, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't invited for that reason, or maybe he's not as big of a player yet in the eyes of the White House. And yes, this does all come after several tech leaders signed an open letter calling for a halt on AI development beyond GPT-4. And, you know, that letter didn't seem like it meant that much because, well, no one decided to halt their progress beyond GPT-4. Everyone else is still full steam ahead with AI, including Elon Musk and Sam Altman and all of these leaders of AI tech. So no one's really halting the race. This is also pretty crazy. The quote unquote godfather of AI quits Google. So this is Jeffrey Hinton, often referred to as the godfather of AI. He quits Google and then warns the world of the dangers ahead. And we shouldn't take this lightly. I mean, these people who know a lot about this technology, especially someone literally called the godfather of AI, we should listen to what he has to say about this stuff and take it into account. It's going to change everything. And if, if we let it change everything too fast, we could have a rapid shift movement where 
it could be dangerous for a lot of people in many different ways. I want you guys to think about this. If we change things too fast, it's very similar to when you move a goldfish, for example, into a new habitat with new water. If you just plunge the goldfish directly into new water, he will pass away, unfortunately. It's very sad. I've, I've seen it happen before in real life. But if you actually put that goldfish in a bag of its own water and let the water sit and change temperatures over time in that new tank, he can then be released and is free to move around that same tank full of the different water. It just needs to be a slow adaptation, and that's how we have to take this AI stuff. This is one of the bigger pieces of AI news as well. Smoke Away here, who is very well known for their AI news, is showing us a leaked internal Google document that claims open source AI is going to outcompete Google and OpenAI. I just love the fact that Google and all these companies are stressing about this. I am fully for the open source AI technology. I don't want some company who has monetary interests influencing how this very important technology is going to operate in the future, although open source stuff does come with its very own dangers as well. So the letter claims that we have no moat, and neither does OpenAI, who seems to be leading the AI race as of right now. They say they've done a lot of looking over our shoulders at OpenAI, who will cross the next milestone in AI? What will the next AI move be? But the uncomfortable truth is that they aren't positioned to win this arms race with AI, and neither is OpenAI. While they've all been squabbling with each other, OpenAI and Google and these companies, a third faction has been quietly eating their lunch, and they're talking, of course, about open source tech. Plainly put, they are lapping us, which is just hilarious. I mean, you think, like, the best AI tech is still OpenAI, but... Here's the kicker about all of that. So things that Google and OpenAI consider major open problems are solved and in people's hands today because of open source tech. While their models still hold a slight edge in terms of overall quality, the gap is closing astonishingly quickly. Open source models are faster, more customizable, more private, and pound for pound, more capable for how much they cost. They are doing things with $100 and 13 million parameters that they struggle to do with $10 million and 540 billion parameters. And they're doing so in weeks, not months. Open source tech is on the rise and it is pushing to become the dominant AI technology over time. It's cheaper, it's more accessible, and it's going to put the power of AI in the hands of people who aren't super powerful already. Google claims that they have no secret sauce. Their best hope is to learn from and collaborate with what others are doing outside of Google. They should prioritize enabling 3P integrations, essentially third-party integrations. I think that's a fantastic idea. People will not pay for a restricted model when free, unrestricted alternatives are comparable in quality, and I have seen this before. I see this in my comments. Whenever I talk about AI that is paid for, I see comments saying, well, I can just run this on my own machine for free. I can just do stable diffusion on my own machine for completely free. Why would I bother paying for one of these other models? And even when I talk about paid models that are really good, which I, I do love to cover the most cutting edge technology, which is often paid stuff. I always see people saying, can I run this at home for free at my house? When is this going to be released as open source? I do agree with the, the statement here that they should consider where their value add really is. Google needs to really buckle down and decide what their value is in this new AI tech sphere, or they are going to disappear. This is another one. Giant models are slowing these big tech companies down. While giant models can sort of do it all and act as a really nice Swiss army knife, in the long run, the best models are the ones that can be iterated upon very quickly and be updated slow, very fast, like Stable Diffusion, for example, and they should make small variants more than an afterthought now that they know what is possible in the 20 billion parameter regime. We've seen a lot of really small, specific use case models be extremely good at certain tasks and run on consumer-grade hardware. Honestly, I just think that this is pretty hilarious that Google is stressing and OpenAI might actually be stressing about this too. 
I am all for open source technology. I think that it puts power back in the hands of the people who don't necessarily have all of the money in the world. I mean, that's what technology really is for. If we want to evolve our species, everyone needs to get access to this tech. And open source is really the way forward. And Stability AI is helping lead the charge. Which again, is it's surprising to me that Stability AI wasn't invited to that White House meeting. But again, the White House isn't necessarily ahead on everything that's happening in AI. Tech. So viewers, there is your weekly AI news roundup. Things are heating up as usual. They're fast. It's every week. Bang, bang, bang. New thing after new thing. Mind blow after mind blow. It's very scary and alarming, but it's also really exciting because this technology is straight up magic. I mean, it is as magical as it gets. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments about uh, any of these AI news pieces, and let's have a healthy discussion about it. See you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.